Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create realistic braid hair in Blender. Let's open the female head model Blender file. I will share the download link in the video description. Select the model, press Ctrl A, and apply the rotation and scale transforms. Go to the Add menu and add an empty hair. This empty curve object is under the head object in the Outliner Editor. Click on the Modifier Properties tab. As you can see, the Surface Deform modifier has been added. To add hair curves, ensure that the model has a UV map. Without a UV map, hair curves cannot be added. Additionally, UV islands must not overlap. Otherwise, an error message will occur. With the curve object selected, switch to Sculpt Mode. In the left panel, you can see different hairbrush tools. We won't go into details here, since we explained these tools in another tutorial. You can watch this tutorial from the top link. All right, with the density brush selected, let's make the brush settings. Set the distance minimum value to 0.1. The brush adds hair curves based on the minimum distance. This is the minimum distance between the hair roots. Go to the Curve Shape menu and set the hair length to 3 meters. Set the number of control points to 24 to have smoother hair curves. Enable the X Symmetry option. So we can work symmetrically on the X axis. You can change the brush size by pressing the F key. Hold down the left click on the head and start applying the brush. Select the comb brush and change the brush falloff type to projected. Enable the collision option in the top right. This will prevent the hair from passing through the model while grooming. Begin grooming the hair. All right, it's time to create braid hair using the Blender Hair Assets. Switch to Object Mode. Click on the Render Properties tab. Scroll down to the Curves panel. Open up the panel and switch the hair shape to Strip. It makes the hair roots thicker and the tip of the hair slimmer along the curves. To make smoother hair curves, set the additional subdivision value to 3. Go to the Modifier tab. Switch the Timeline Editor to the Asset Browser. Open up the Hair Assets. These are geometry nodes to create hair. Select the right category. It's very easy to use. Just drag and drop the Set Hair Curve Profile node onto the hair curves. As you can see, the new Geometry Node modifier will be added to the Modifier stack. This allows us to set the radius of the hair curves according to a profile shape. If you increase the radius value, the hair curves become thicker. Shape value controls the shape of the curves. You can make the hair roots slimmer and the hair tips thicker. Set the shape value to 0.5 and set the radius value to 0.001. Select the generation category. This category allows us to generate new hair curves around the guide curves. Let's drag and drop the Interpolate Hair Curves node onto the hair. Note that this modifier won't work without the Surface Geometry and Surface UV Map inputs. 
Let's select the head as the surface. Go to the Curve Properties tab. Press Ctrl-C to copy the surface UV map name. Back to the Modifier tab and press Ctrl-V to paste the UV name inside the surface UV map. Set the distance to guide value to 0.1. Set the density of generated hair curves to 5000. You can also decrease the viewport amount to work with easily. Alright, it's time to make a braid hairstyle. Select the Guide category. This category allows us to generate different hairstyles. Let's drag and drop the braid hair node onto the hair. This modifier deforms existing hair curves into braids using guide curves. Disable the existing guide map. In this case, the guide distance and guide mask input will be used to generate a new guide map for this node. Set the guide distance to 1.5. This is the minimum distance between two guides for a new guide map. Set the subdivision level to 3. The braid start value controls the distance from the hair roots where the curve begins to braid. Set the braid start value to 0.5. The radius value is the overall radius of the braids. Set the radius value to 0.4. The shape value is the shape of the braid radius along each curve. Set the shape value to 0.3. The frequency value controls how frequent the braids will be. Set the frequency value to 1. The thickness value controls the thickness of each strand of hair. Set the thickness value to 0.6. Alright, set the viewport amount to 1. As you can see, in some parts, the hair curves remain under the skin. To fix this, set the viewport amount to 0.1. Switch to the Sculpt mode. Select the Paint Selection tool. Switch the Brush Falloff type to Projected. Switch to the Side View and select these parts. Press Ctrl-I to invert the selection, so the brush will affect only the selection. Select the Puff Brush. Apply the brush and fluff the hair. Press Ctrl-I to invert the selection. Select the Grow and Shrink tool. Grow the hair. Select the Comb tool and groom the hair. Don't forget to disable the X symmetry. Switch back to Object Mode. Alright, it's time to add hair material and get rendered. Press the Z key to switch to Render Preview Mode. Go to the Render Properties tab and switch to the Cycles. We will use Environment Texture for Lighting. Go to the World Properties tab. Click on the color node and choose any environment texture. Click on the open button and choose any HDRI image. For a transparent background, go back to the Render Properties tab. Scroll down to the Film panel. Open up the panel and enable the transparent option. It's time to add hair material. Switch the asset browser to the shader editor. Select the hair, click on the new button, and add a material for the hair. Select the principled shader and delete it. Add a principled hair shader. 
plug the node into the material output node. You can change the hair color. You can also switch to melanin concentration as hair material. You can change the settings to get the result you want. Having trouble making 3D hair from scratch? I would like to introduce you to an online platform called Pixel Hair. It offers ready-made 3D hairstyles for Blender. Pixel Hair offers realistic hair with realistic volume and appearance. It is made using the default Blender particle system. Pixel Hair includes a wide variety of hairstyles like braids, curls, knots, fades, dreads, afros, beards, and so on. It also comes equipped with a hair cap mesh. This allows you to use it with as many characters as you want. The groom and all hair settings are completely customizable. You can tweak it in whatever way you want to better suit your project. Pixel hair can also be exported to Unreal Engine and used with any metahuman of your choice. Let's see how it works. Go to the website. I will share the link in the video description. Click on the Pixel hair tab. You can find lots of hairstyles here. Choose any hairstyle you like. Prices will vary depending on license type. If you make your purchase through the link I provided in the video description, you will get a 25% discount at the checkout. Alright, let's search for the Bantu Knots hairstyle. This is a free hairstyle to try. Click on the Add to Cart button. Fill in the required fields and download the hair asset as a Blender file. Having bought a Pixel Hair hairstyle, you'll get a RAR file to download. This file has the blend file with the hairstyle. After downloading, unzip the file with any software you prefer. Open a new Blender file. Go to the File menu, Append, and select the Blender file we just downloaded. Select the Sculpt 001 file and open it. Applying the hair to your character is simple. Select the hair mesh. Hit the G key to position the hair mesh over your character's head. You can disable the hair particle systems by clicking on the monitor icon. So, you can work easily in the viewport. You can also scale the mesh by pressing S and dragging the mouse. The aim is to fit the hair mesh as close to the character's head as possible. Here you can see the modifiers applied to hair mesh. There must be the shrink wrap and particle system modifiers. For some of you, the purchased hair might have a shrink wrap modifier set up, but if the purchased hair doesn't have a shrink wrap modifier, you can easily add one. Search for the shrink wrap modifier. The modifier should be at the top of the modifier list. Select the character's head as the target object, so the hair mesh will snap to the character's head. Sometimes, you might encounter errors like the one shown in the viewport, often occurring around the ear. This issue arises when the hair mesh is too far from the scalp and closer to the ear, causing confusion for the shrink wrap modifier. To fix this, switch to the sculpt mode. Select the elastic deform modifier. Deactivate the shrink wrap modifier by turning off the TV icon. Use the elastic deform tool to gently pull the hair mesh closer to the head. After adjusting, reactivate the shrink wrap modifier. This should resolve the issue. With all errors fixed, go back to the object mode. Now go ahead and unhide the hair particles. Voila! Your character now has the new hairstyle. You can also hide the hair mesh in the viewport. Click the Particle Properties tab, open up the viewport display section, and disable the Show Emitter option. Press Z key to switch to Render Preview mode. You can also customize the hair as you wish. Disable all particle systems and activate only the one you want to customize. Select the particle system and customize its parameters as you wish.
All right. What if you want to bind the hair to the character's armature? To do that, first, select the hair mesh, then select the armature. Switch the pose mode and select the head bone. Press Ctrl P and set parent the bone to the hair. There we go. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.